change color, change to color, and leave color are all found under the color correction category. So let's take a look at each one of those. First, I'm gonna start with change color and apply it to this photo. And what this effect allows us to do is sample any color in our comp and then modify that specific color. So let's jump straight to this color to change property and use the eyedropper to select, say, this green color. And a handy little tip with any eyedropper inside of After Effects, if you hold down the controller command key, you see how my eyedropper got slightly bigger? That's going to take the average sample of a larger selection of pixels rather than just the one pixel underneath the eyedropper. So I'm gonna hold down control while doing that to get an average color around that green. Now that that's been sampled, I can change the hue, lightness, or saturation using these three controls. So if I wanna make that green more red, or any other color on the spectrum, I just shift that value around. So let's make it this blue color. Just so we can see that manipulation nice and clearly, could also increase or decrease the lightness and the saturation. Let's leave that nice and saturated. And then after the color to change property, we have matching tolerance. So this just gives the effect more or less of a margin basically for selecting similar colors to what we sampled as well as the matching softness, which is basically just softening out the map. It's not manipulating colors similar to this one, it's just taking the selection and softening it out a bit. Next, we have match colors, and this is the method that we're using to match the colors from. So it's currently using the RGB values, but I could also change this to using hue where the effect is purely looking at the hue and not the saturation and lightness of the pixels to determine if it's a match, or we could do it using the chroma values, which would be hue and saturation, ignoring the luminance or the lightness of the pixels. I'm gonna switch that back to using RGB, and then we can use this checkbox to invert color correction. So if I check that, it's going to invert the mat that is applying this color correction. So we're essentially leaving what we sampled and only affecting everything else. Finally, at the top of the list, we've been looking at the corrected layer view, meaning the final affected version of this layer, but I could change this to the color correction mask so that we can see the mat that it's actually using. So if I turn that softness down, you see that it gets a lot more harsh. I could really crank that up, turn down the matching tolerance, uncheck invert color correction. So that just allows you to view the mat as it's actually being used. But that's it for change color. So let's turn that off and now add change to color, which again allows us to sample any color. So let me start by doing that. Hold down control and sample this green color again. And then the second color control with the eyedropper allows me to change it to a different color. So if I change this color to something maybe bright magenta, then it's going to be very different from what it was, turning that off and back on. So instead of using the hue, lightness, and saturation controls to manipulate the color, I can simply just choose a different color using the color control. The next two properties are determining what this effect actually does. So currently we're changing the hue of the sampled pixels by setting to color, meaning this to color. But I could change this value from hue to hue and lightness. Then it will take the lightness values into account as well. It's not just manipulating the hue, but also the lightness or the hue and saturation, ignoring the lightness or all three, hue, lightness, and saturation. And in that case, we're basically just getting a fill. All the sampled pixels are just getting filled with that color because we're taking the hue, lightness, and saturation of this two color and applying it to everything that was sampled. I'm gonna change that back to hue. And then on the change by setting, we can change this from setting to color to transforming to color. And that's just going to make a more interpolated, smooth transition from one color to the other. So it's basically shifting these values towards that color instead of just completely changing the color. Now it's not really making a difference on this particular set of colors, but if I went down here to the softness value and turned that all the way up to 100% and then changed this value from setting to color to transforming to color, you can see there is a difference there. So it's going to be a little bit more natural because you can see those outside pixel values are a little bit more red and less magenta. As I switch to setting to color, it's all pretty much tinted to that color. You can really see that in these flowers as well. If I change that back, these outside edges that are a lot softer, this out of focus flower gets a little bit more red rather than just magenta. Now we also have this whole tolerance category, which allows us to manipulate how much influence the hue, lightness, and saturation has in this effect. So if I increase the hue, then we're going to get a lot more tint. If I decrease it, it's gonna be less. The lightness and saturation aren't going to do anything because I'm not changing the lightness or saturation, but if I go to hue, lightness, and saturation, and then maybe turn the lightness and the saturation down, then they will have less influence over the entire manipulation. 
And just like change color, we have the ability to view the correction mat. That's it for change to color. Now let's look at leave color. I'll apply that. And once again, we have an eyedropper to sample part of our image. So let's grab that eyedropper. And this time I'll select the yellow color, again, holding down control. And then the amount to decolor value is set to zero. But if I turn that all the way up to 100%, then that color that I selected is the only color that will be left with actual color in it. It desaturates all of the other colors. And I could turn that down if I don't want to desaturate completely. But just to be able to view this really clearly, I will turn that all the way up. Now I can increase or decrease the tolerance to bring in similar colors to that sample, as well as the edge softness, which doesn't bring in more colors. Remember that just softens out the mat. And then we have match colors, and it's currently set to using RGB, but I could also change this to just using hue, which brings in a lot more of my image. I might need to turn down the tolerance a little bit, but what these two values do are use strictly red, green, and blue channels versus using hue, lightness, and saturation to match those colors. Now, a lot of what can be done with these three effects could be done with other effects, but each one of them has its own set of controls that makes it really simple to do these individual tasks with lots of fine detail control. So it's worth knowing about all three of them. But that's it for change color, change to color, and leave color. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.